Hey everybody, <laughs> what's happening? Greetings, it's Monday afternoon here. I'm just out walking on the golf course here, kind of wrapping up my day. Had an incredible day. And uh, the, the golf course here at Anthem Country Club is closed on Monday, so oftentimes just come out here and walk and think. And it's really my exercise. I don't do, I don't really do much but walking right now. And it's great though, because the hills and it's also, it's fantastic. It's a beautiful community. We have multi, multi-million dollar homes on this golf course. So it's also great, you know, just to walk on the cart path and uh, look at these beautiful homes. It's, it's very inspirational. And, you know, in my situation too, because of my health situation, it gives me hope and hope keep, gives you life. You know, one of my favorite books that I ever read that changed my life is called Man's Search for Meaning, written by Viktor Frankl. And he was an Austrian psychologist who was captured by the Nazis in World War II and he was in three different concentration camps from 90 no from 43 to 45 and you know obviously he's a psychologist and he was in there and he was observing patients I mean he was in prison he but he he was observing the patients and he they kind of kept him I don't know if they kept him alive to do this but he was he kind of helped the camaraderie of the of the of the uh, prisoners. But what he wrote about in his book was that he, he talked about how men had, you know, man's search for meaning. And they talk, he talks about really they can take anything from you. People can take anything from you except for the ability to control your mindset and to be happy or to whatever you focus on. So that's what he determined. You know, they can, because, you know, back in the in World War II, they, you know, they were capturing these, these, you know, Jews and these people were professionals, you know, they were doctors and lawyers and they would take them from, take all everything off their body, their watches, their jewelry, and they would just slap a number on them and all of a sudden they lost their identity. So imagine being somebody of success, somebody that's successful in your in community and all of a sudden you're, they take everything from you, put you in an environment where nobody knows your name and you're just a number. And, you know, of course that's, that's daunting and of course people were dying and so, so what he did was Viktor Frankl talked about, you know, not everybody died in the gas chamber. So many of the prisoners who didn't go to the jet gas chamber, it was so difficult the, the, you know, they had to do such hard work and cold and, you know, just bread and soup. <laughs> and um, so they all thought they were gonna die too. They thought they were all gonna go to the, the gas chamber. And so what Viktor Frankl wrote about was the fact that when people lost hope, so these guys, that they would pick a date, like, okay, I'm gonna get out on this date right before Christmas so I can see my family. And they would have, you know, let's say the date was, you know, December 12th, or let's say it was December 25th, let's say it was Christmas. And they had the date that that's when they were gonna go home and the war was gonna be over. And when that day came and went, they oftentimes died because they lost hope. That was their, that was their target. The target came and went, they lost hope and they died. So, <laughs> The reason I'm telling you that is, you know, when I'm out here going through what I'm going through, um, you know, seeing the nice homes and it gives me hope and gives me vision, which is great. You know, it keeps me, you know, it keeps me alive. I believe that can heal me too. So, but I want to talk to you today about, about uh, just perseverance and, you know, never letting go and, you know, never quitting. You know, I want to tell you a quick story about uh, while I was playing college basketball. Uh, it was my senior year, <clears throat> and uh, we had won the national championship the year before. So I'm about, what, 21 years old, possibly, 20, 21 years old. Won the national championship the year before. I'm coming back from my senior year. I started the entire, you know, my entire junior year. So I went to school uh, at Fort Hayes State University in Kansas, which is Division II school. And I, it started the whole season. We were 35-2 and two that year, and we won the national title as a junior. So I'm coming back my senior year. I'm fired up. Worked hard in the summer, as always. Got ready. Uh, we're kicking ass. Well, we're getting started. We get a transfer in. My coach brought in a lot of JUCO transfers and guys from D1. Our entire team was... Well, not our entire team. We had a lot of D1 transfers. Um, but we brought in this kid. Not kid. We brought in this guy from UTEP. University of Texas El Paso, El Paso, D1 school. His name was Rod Neely. And Rod was 6'6", 6'6", 6'7", wirely lean, excellent player. Great hands, just a feathery touch. He was a really good player. Rod definitely had more talent than I did, more skill, no question. 
So, you know, you kind of look and see what's going on. Rod comes in and he's not eligible till Christmas. So we're all doing our thing and I'm in the starting rotation. In practice, as we move towards Christmas, you know, they're rotating Rod in and out of the lineup on the starters, you know, just on the, in practice. But of course, he doesn't play because he's not eligible. And then January comes along and, you know, Rod's eligible and he's a, he's a really good player. So I think he came off the bench the first couple games and, you know, I think it was like I didn't play well or something and boom, all, all I know is, I don't know exactly what transpired, but all of a sudden Rod's starting and I'm coming off the bench. So here's what could have happened. So here I am, a senior, played well. It's my last year. They bring in this D1 guy who's really talented, takes my spot. I'm playing less. And then all of a sudden, you know, I have a couple shaky outings because my coach was, he was tough, you know, and, and um, he, he wasn't someone you could talk to. He, he uh, you know, his, his name was Bill Morris. And Bill, if you're watching this, it's all good. Uh, Bill allowed me to, um, Coach Morris, develop my mindset of, of a champion, be able to overcome any obstacles. And, and so that's where I really developed my winning mindset. So Coach wasn't a good communicator, but he was a great, he was a great challenger for me. And I, uh, I attribute a lot of my success to Coach Morris. So anyway, so what happened was, is uh, a couple games in a row, I, I mean, like he put me in and then I would make a mistake or something wouldn't go well, or there'd be a turnover. I might even miss a shot and boom, I'd be on the bench. That would be it. I mean, literally that would be it. So it could be a two minute run or, and one time it was like a, a one and a half minute run or something. I came off, he, he pulled me off and I was pissed. And I kind of, you know, like, what coach, what the? And he looked at me and he said, Lear, sit the hell down. If you ever want to coach again, sit down and shut up. <laughs> he knew I wanted to be a college coach. So he told me those, those words. And so again, here's the scenario. What could have taken place? Talented player gets elevated. Less talented player goes off the starting lineup. Less talented player could have bad attitude and point fingers and say it's not fair and self-destruct, cash it in and say, F you guys, I had a good year and you guys don't understand. And it happens all the time. But the lesser player decided that there was more in his life and that wasn't the end. And I really believed there'd be more opportunities. I really did. I believed there'd be more opportunities. So I continued to work hard. I'd practice with the second unit, go back and forth. But I was with the second unit now in practice. But I was working hard, man. I was crushing it. I was going at them. I was scoring. I was shooting. I was being aggressive. But I had a great attitude. And, uh, you know, when I got called in the game, I'd do my thing. And sometimes I'd get pulled out. And, but two, game, two home games in a row, I barely got in. First time, I didn't get in very much. And uh, we led the nation in non-Division I uh, attendance for two straight years. We had a beautiful coliseum. And on the second floor of the coliseum were all the concession stands. And so after the game, I didn't play very much. I went upstairs and I would start running because I knew, I knew I needed to stay in shape because I knew I was going to get another chance. And if I wasn't ready for that opportunity, then I was going to blow it. And then I would probably be sitting for the entire year. So... I knew there was going to be opportunities because I know human behavior and things happen and people slip up and stuff goes down. So I know that if I stay ready, I'm going to get a shot and I'm going to win. So I went up and I was running around Gross Memorial Coliseum, second level. All the concessions are up there, probably 10 concession stands. And our football players and our baseball players worked up there because it's part of their scholarship agreement. Our basketball players, we worked at the football player games at the at the concession selling cokes and hot dogs and stuff and so i'm up there running i'm up there running and football players are looking at me and the baseball players are looking at me and some of these players like me and some of these players don't like me and i heard a few shout outs and a few respect nods but you know just doing my thing and so i did a good run up there and go back down and you know next game next home game the same thing happened <laughs> And I went upstairs and ran again. And then the next away game, we played at Marymount. And uh, they were a good, they were a rival, good, good team, but we were number one in the nation and we were probably gonna win. Uh, and, and we did. But after the game, I played a little bit during the game, but after the game, Rod, who was a great player and he started, 
uh, there was a party there. He knew some, he knew some people there, and there was a party, and he wanted to stay. And he asked Coach. He said, "Coach, I want to stay." And Coach said, "No." Probably a liability issue, but Coach said no. And and Rod went against uh, Coach's uh, word and decided to stay. So Coach obviously was put in a precarious position. So he had to discipline Rod. It's weird because. As a basketball coach, I mean, if I'm a head coach and one of my best players <laughs> does that, you got to discipline them, but you still want them. So you got to, you know, you, you don't kick them off the team, obviously, because you want to win. But they disciplined Rod, and I think they just suspended him for a game or two. But he lost his starting spot, and guess who they put in that starting spot? That's right, yours truly. And so I stepped in there against Marymount. I was ready, I was hungry, I was confident, because I had done the work. I was doing the work in practice. I was working hard in practice. I had a winning attitude even though I wasn't playing. And I did the extra work after practice in front of people because I didn't care because I knew that I was gonna have a chance to win. So the game, I played the game, started the game, I played well. I didn't play great, but I played well. And well enough that I never lost my starting spot through the entire rest of the year and into the playoffs and onto the second national title where we won our second straight national championship for the Fort Hayes State Tigers. Now, what's interesting about that is we wouldn't have won that, we wouldn't have won their second national title without Rod. I mean, you know, Rod's still one of our best players. He made a mistake, he paid the price. I was able to step up. And the, the big picture is we all win. I won because I was prepared. If I wasn't prepared, then I wouldn't have won. They had other players they could have put in there, but they put me in there, gave me a shot, I won. We had other players on the bench that were more talented than I was too. But he gave me a chance. So, and Rod won because he's part of a winning team and he won a national title and obviously we couldn't have done it without him. He's a great player. So shout out to you, Rod. If you, I tell people this story all the time. I've never mentioned your name before, but I ran into your wife obviously down in Phoenix when I did the training and uh, so hats off to you, bro. It was uh, it's the Rod Neely lesson that I've used over and over and over in my career. Business-wise, personally, going through a lot of personal challenges, whether it's finances or, or relationships and, you know, intimate relationships or business relationships and just knowing uh, that if you put in the work, you believe and you grind it out, you're going to be successful. So... In my two years at Fort Hayes State, we went 70 and five, and we won two straight national titles. And that was awesome. But what was more awesome was I learned how to win. And so what I'm sharing with you today is if, if you know, you're, you're frustrated or something happened to you or you're down or you're down on your luck or <laughs> something took place, you know, I'm with you. I'm not making fun of that at all because things happen every day. And so, you know, I think what's been able to separate me from a lot of people is my ability to stay focused and stay level-headed and just keep doing it, keep grinding. So that's what I'm that's what I'm offering to you is that no matter what situation you're in, <laughs> no matter what situation you're in, first of all, you have to have the mindset and the belief that it's going to get better and that you can fix it, right? You got to say, "How can I fix it?" rather than focusing on the challenge, the situation or the problem focus on the solution. My solution was to keep my head up, keep working hard, and go at it and be prepared. So what's your solution to your problem? What, what could you change? What could you do? And start doing it. And stay with it because that's the key. It's the consistency. Most people might start out and say, I'm going to do it, but they lose, they lose touch and they lose the steam and then pretty soon they fall off. And the people that stay there will just, there'll be an edge up because most people fall off. Because think about my situation. I'm not blowing my own horn here because I was a good player, not a great player, but I was good enough and understood what it took to be a starter and to be on two straight national championship teams. Yet it was easy for me to quit, easy for me to quit. I had a great year the year before, won a national title. So I could have told my grandkids and my kids, oh man, kicked ass my, soft, my, my junior year, won a national title. And then I could have talked about what, uh, coaches of this and of that and I could have pointed fingers and oh well who cares because I had a great you know junior year but that's not what went down I decided I wanted to have a, a good senior year too so you're in control of your outcome no matter what's going on you might not be in control of where you are right now but you're in control of what you do so let's go out there and make it happen just take it step by step 
So, hey man, sun's going down. It's so beautiful here in Vegas. It's uh, April 8th, it's a Monday. It is 6.30 p.m. I'm going inside right now after this exercise. You know, I don't do a lot with my amyloidosis right now, so this is a good workout for me. The amyloidosis uh, give, uh, give it, has given me, excuse me, congestive heart failure. So as I look to rehab myself, you know, walking on a golf course up the hills and stuff is really good for me. So thanks for, thanks for coming along with my workout. And just think about, keep pushing. Think about what you want to accomplish and uh, make it happen. If you're interested in coming along with us and being with a group of winners, come on and join our 1% Academy. It's our 1% Academy. It's, it's $99 a month to be with a group of winners. You get four webinars, live webinars a month and access to my multi-million dollar training center. We're training on sales, communication, leadership, five keys to a perfect presentation, the business of speaking, teaching people how to be a professional speaker, 21 principles to wealth, freedom, health, and happiness, how to develop undeniable self-confidence, and of course, my sales course, which I already talked to you about, but this sales course is a sales course that's in Fortune 500 companies all around the world. So you gotta check this one out. All right, y'all. Have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me.